This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today we are going to be exploring uh, Essex Junction's Dark Room Gallery and a Vermont photographer uh, who is going to be exhibiting there in the very near future, as well as some other aspects uh, of uh, the work being done uh, uh, by and at the Dark Room Gallery, which uh, is a very familiar locale in beautiful downtown Essex Junction uh, near the railroad station and uh, a very great addition to the entire community and perhaps the state. And my guests are Ken Signorello of the uh, Dark Room Gallery and Peggy Reynolds of Vermont Photographer. Uh, welcome, Ken, and welcome, Penny. Peggy, welcome, Peggy. Dennis. And uh, first, tell us a little bit about yourself, Ken, please. And the Dark well, Room. Um I'm a, I do some photography. I've done a lot um, over the years. So I'm in study of photography in college. And um, when this space became available 12 years ago, um, it became empty. It was empty for quite a while. I looked in and I says, oh, that looks like a good place for a gallery, long and narrow. And there was a model gallery that um, was going on in Middlebury that we thought was a great idea. And what they did and what we're doing, or did do, uh, was we ran juried photography exhibits where you would set a theme, find a qualified juror, and then uh, ask photographers to submit their work for a small fee. That juror would get a thousand, maybe 2000 images or so in for a particular show. And then the, uh, the juror would select the cream of the crop, about 50 or so images. And those would be sent in either on paper, framed, or we would print them and frame them. And we would hang them and show, have a show for about a month and we had an, um, a reception where the artists would sometimes come if they were um, not too far away. And that worked out pretty well. We did that for 10 years. We did about a hundred shows. But one thing that was consistent is one particular photographer tended to be in almost every single show selected consistently. And she was local. And I mean, really local. She lives right here in Essex Junction. And um, so when COVID hit, we kind of shut down. It was a difficult situation. So we just shut down for, um, for two years now. And um, we're getting ready to open up and do something. And I thought we'd do something a little different. And we give a show to Peggy, who's got a lot of great images. Um, she's been studying, uh, practicing photography, um, studying herself, actually. You'll see a lot of the work that she has is um, our self-portraits. And um, so she'll be hanging um, her show. When does your show start? Um, we have to go look. May 10th, something like that? May 13th. May 13th. There we yeah. go. In fact, I think it's a Friday. Yes, it's Friday yes, the 13th. It's, it's Friday the 13th. Good luck. And um, so that'll be up for a month. And then we're going to have a reception on the 22nd, I believe it is. Yes, it is. So, Dennis, if it's okay with you, if you have no other questions of me, I will turn things over to Peggy. Let me ask uh, uh, Peggy, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your work. Well, I originally started it off as a hobby um, a long time ago using film and doing darkroom work. And then I just stopped doing it for the longest time. Then I took it up again and I was posting work online. And then I found that I was experiencing large amounts of art theft. And then I thought, well, if it's good enough to steal, maybe there's something to it. And that's when I started um, entering juried exhibitions. What do you mean by art theft? Who was taking, uh, they were taking it from the line, uh, online? Right. And, they, you know, it would end up on commercial websites, um, people claiming my work as their own. It wound up in um, photographers' portfolios. It's, it was just crazy. I mean, imitation is the highest form of flattery, but it's illegal. Well, this is true, but I thought, well, I, I didn't think my work would, I, you know, I didn't have a thought about like the quality of it. I just do it because I enjoy it. And I said, like, well, maybe I should try some exhibitions. Maybe, th maybe it's pretty good. Great. And what, what uh, type of work is it? I'm, 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 you know, today is, it's kind of difficult. I started out in college and we were, you know, we were taking pictures with camera, 35 millimeter and developing them and, that's and what today, I do too. People are just taking it with, with uh, phones. And things. Tell us your medium and how you work with it. Well, I still like film. 
Um, I started out with film. I still have my original film camera. It's a Olympus OM-1N. And I also have my dad's Rolleiflex that he gave me. So that's kind of cool. But um, right now I'm using a Canon uh, 5D Mark III digital. And how does that work? Does it produce a computer image or, or do you develop? That's what I'm trying to get at. Oh, okay. Um, well, it, it makes the digital image and then you, you process it online with software. I mean, process it on your computer with software as opposed to going in the dark room. Um, the thing is I'm trying to marry both in a way. I like the look of film. So I try to make my digital photos look like film as much as I can. I also prefer a more vintage kind of look to my photos. That's kind of, that, that's, the, um, that's what I try to do anyway. I see. So that's that's very curious because uh, um, there are people who work solely in, in each different media, uh, but the idea of melding it, you know, again, I, I feel that personally, I, I take a lot of what I, I don't call them photographs, I call them pictures, and you know, uh, that's fine. People say they like them, but to me, as old as I am, I, I still think of the, the, the cameras with the f-stops and the lighting and through the settings and all that. You still have to do all of that. I have to, I do all my own settings, you know, F stops and, you know, uh, everything. And the lighting is always critical. It's not like some magic box where you just point and shoot. Mm -hmm. I see. So what, when did you uh, first find uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, your, your work was being replicated? Uh, oh, I guess around 2012, 2013. That's quite a, a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. It's still happening. I, I just, it, if it's online, someone's going to take it. That's just how it is. What types of subjects uh, uh, intrigued you in the beginning and what types of subjects are you working on now? Um, pretty much anything that catches my eye. I do, um, well, self-portraits obviously, but I also do landscapes. Uh, a lot of, I did a lot of New York City street photography, uh, architecture, urban exploration, um, wildlife, Pretty much, pretty much anything that look, oh, still life, anything that's of interest. Um, mostly what I'm trying to do is convey a concept or convey something that happened in my life. And I, I wonder how would that rep be represented in picture form, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like a visual diary for me. I can look at a photo and I knew exactly where, what I was feeling and what, where I was at, at that point in time. When did you start doing this personally? Well, a long time ago. Um, originally, I started uh, probably like 30 years ago. And then I, then I didn't do it for the longest time. And then uh, I guess around 2008, I started doing it again. I was doing um, metal work. And I didn't want to pay anyone to take pictures of my, photo, of my work for, because it's expensive. So I did my own, so I, thought, I used to do photos. I whipped out my film camera, took my photos for an exhibition for uh, my metal work. And I thought, gee, I forgot how much fun this was. And then it just progressed. Tell us about the, that other uh, uh, form that you were metal work. Tell us about that. Well, I, I was taking um, jewelry classes um, at the Shelburne craft school. And then I was taking also private lessons with my, uh, with a metalworking teacher. She had like a studio, got to use all her stuff, which was cool. And then she entered some of my work in an exhibition, but I needed photos and I wasn't going to pay what she pays for her photos. So I said, well, I'm doing it myself. And at that time I was using my film camera. So I used um, my Olympus, but I also took some of my work with um, my dad's Rolly. That's amazing camera it's, it's the one you wind up uh like you see oh yeah through. and you and you look down in a viewfinder and you use um 120 film and i just that's like my favorite camera yeah i remember old news photographers using those uh yeah. many years ago uh when i was a cub reporter uh that that's really interesting uh now tell us about this exhibit that's coming up uh, how are things going to be arranged and what uh will people see well, um, there's going to be 51 photos um, taken over probably about 11, maybe even 12 years as a period of time. And it's just like 
maybe I made up a story and it, I'm a character in the photo or something or some emotion I was feeling at, at that moment and I wanted to express it in an image or, um, or a concept. Like, uh, for example, one of the photos, um, it's called Under the Influence. It's how media affects people's perceptions and, and how it affects society. And I have a photo that represents what that would be about, how that looks to me. I see the the title photo there on the, there's a framed uh, photo uh, of the uh, poster. The poster is very nice. Uh, it's in Thank you. Ken's window and I see it all, another place. So tell us what that photograph is. The name of that photo is Autumn Air and it's kind of like. <laughs> That's good. Um, woo. That's good. That's, um, it's kind of like the personification of Autumn Air. Uh, if it were a fairy or a person, I love the smell of the air in, in autumn. I, it's just very crisp and clean. And, and I think of, when I think of autumn, I think of the color of the leaves. So I have red balloons capturing this air. And then of course there are legs because it's sort of a personification. If, if autumn air were a person, that's what it would look like. That's really, that's very interesting. And why did you chose that as your theme photo? Any particular reason? Well, I kind of, there's a lot of different kinds of photos, um, but that one has, um, I usually do black and white, but I thought the color looked very appealing and it would be catch the eye. Well, that's very interesting uh, uh, in black and white. Um, how, do, how does that work in terms of, let, let's say, you know, we live in a very colorful state with our autumn leaves and now we're getting a bit of greenery and all of our snow, of course, which is white. How does black and white uh, help? Uh, convey what you want to convey. You have the absence of color. You're focused on the emotion of the image. It convey black and white conveys an, uh, an emotion like like nothing else. Color can be a bit of a distraction. For example, with black and white, you have um, shadows and light. You have contrast, and it can convey something really powerful. I think. Interesting. I I've noticed even that some some photos that are are taken in color actually look like black. Uh, I, I saw something that happened to, to me with that recently. I, I, was, I was making, do, do I have this right? But no, it, it came out black and white, even though it was of a color sub. Well, it could be, it was just, um, the colors probably were just muted for, you know, whatever the lighting was, maybe it was a gray day and they just didn't pop. That's great. And what, um, uh, what has uh, influenced you in, in terms of the, the Vermont environment in terms of your work? The backdrop of Vermont, it's so dramatic. And, and you get the feeling that something happened here. You get, you know, it's just, you'll go in, I'll go in different parts of a forest and you just feel like there's, there's a kind of magic and swamps have a kind of magic to them. Or even um, uh, like with urban exploration, you'll see like a, uh, a ramshackled um, building that's sort of like falling down, but you wonder who lived there. I don't know, the, it, you just get the sense of a story. There's a lot of drama here. Yeah, I can see that, particularly downtown, Burlington, just uh, a lot of things that are not there anymore. Uh, you know, the, the site down there near the uh, city place site, you know, just extremely grim no matter how you take it, you know, whether it's color of black and white. I took a few photographs of that myself, uh, not for artistic reasons, but just for journalistic reasons. Uh, so that, that's amazing stuff. And what about people? Do you do any portraits of people? Um, mostly of myself or um, my, I've also taken quite a few of my family. Um, my favorite model is my daughter. We have, I have a lot of um, lovely photos of her as well. She was a, a willing model, thankfully. Great. And what do you do with your self portraits? How do you work that? Well, I can leave it. Leave through this. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, well, I, I have the camera set up remotely, you know, where I can just, I hit a, have a remote button to, to release the shutter. I have another one that's just for the, um, for the flash. And I, I have like a, and pretty much anywhere it'll be, I have a little room set up in my house that's like my makeshift studio, but it could be my daughter's bedroom. It could be my driveway. It could be my backyard. 
pretty much anywhere. That's great. And and what what um, what's next for you? Uh, are you planning other other exhibitions or uh, any other uh, projects, such as maybe a oh, I always, theme? There are always projects. Um, I have a pretty huge catalog that I'm trying to organize. Like I have a ton of New York City street photos. I have um, a lot of California desert photos that I'm I'm putting together because that was very dramatic. In a way, it's funny, the desert in a way is dramatic the same way Vermont landscape is dramatic. You sense that stories happening, you know, something happened here. It's very beautiful, very almost exotic. And um, so I'm trying, I'm organizing everything. That's great. And, and uh, will people be able to buy these photos or? or uh, uh, yes. How, how does that work? Is, uh, well, um, at the uh, darkroom gallery for the show, the all the photos are for sale, and I also have a catalog with all the photos that are in the exhibition, which is the catalog is also for sale. How big is that? How big is the catalog? Here it is. Ken is doing a great job here. Yes, That's he is. What happens when no one is looking? That's the theme. Uh, where yes. did you come up with that from? What happens well, when no one is looking? A lot of these photos I've done like um, out of doors, like for example, the balloon photo, I kept thinking, this is really strange. If the neighbors see me, I'm going to die because um, I'm there with the balloons and I figured, well, hopefully no one will ask what, what I'm doing. Um, I've had other photos where I'm in costume in the forest across the street from my house and I'm thinking, if anybody come, is coming through by, for a walk and they see me with the camera and the costume, it's going to be a little weird, but so it's pretty much um, when no one sees me and I'm I'm doing experimenting. Great, and uh, maybe we can get Ken back here for a second, sure. and uh, maybe he can. Right, I'm right here, Dennis. Okay, but tell us like uh, this. You're having an opening reception uh, we are. again here, and tell us what's going to happen there. Well, the receptions are pretty simple affair. We'll have some refreshments, obviously, and people can come in over the course of about four hours, I believe. They can meet with Peggy, talk with her. They'll learn a little bit more about each of the images, um, find out if there's something that they're interested in to purchase. And um, yeah, it's an informative kind of a thing. You know, they'll, they'll see other things here at the gallery. We have some items on display, some old cameras and things. So um, it's an interesting place to visit regardless. Right. And will you be uh, speaking to, uh, to the group or uh, just be available? Then? We don't. Well, I'll be here and I'll speak to anybody that comes in, certainly. But um, no, we don't have any like seminar sort of idea at this point mm -hmm. scheduled. But um, usually what ends up happening at the receptions and we've done a hundred of them, um, you know, folks are intrigued by the images and um, we have conversations and um, people learn about what's going on, what the artist is trying to convey. It really varies from show to show and how many artists show up. But in this case, we're lucky. We're going to have all the images will be Peggy's and she'll be able to explain her process and her work and what she's trying to accomplish. Wait, um, she, that's on May 13th. What time will it start? The show opens on May the 13th and the reception is on May 22nd. Mm -hmm. uh, double check that. Yep, May 22nd from four o'clock to 7 p.m. So it'll be open over the Memorial Day weekend. That's a pretty busy weekend here in Essex Junction. If you know about the Memorial Day Parade, it'll actually be on again. Um, it's been off for a couple of years, so this year it's back. So that's a big event. There'll be a lot of foot traffic and people will be stopping in, certainly. Um, that's not the day of the reception, but nevertheless, that'll be um, a nice um, opportunity for folks to come and do two things, come and see the show and see the Memorial Day Parade. That's really great. And, and uh... Uh, the catalog, is that out yet, the, the uh, physical catalog? Yep, the catalog is here, and um, it's really, really a lovely catalog. Peggy did an incredible job putting this together. I mean, some of the images in here are just fabulous, if you take a look. That's really beautiful. That's excellent. That's very interesting. One of my favorite images in here, where's the one with the hat? That's, that's I think, my favorite. Yeah, here it is. This is an image I think it's just exemplifies Peggy's skill level. She, this is this is a mastery of photography. That really that really looks like some of the relatively famous photographs you'd see, I guess, in Vogue or, or something like that. Want to talk about that image? 
Yeah, I can. Um, I, I love photography from early photography, but I think my favorite is probably uh, late 50s, early 1960s. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like Look and Life magazine, that kind of thing. And, and you have burn and like that, that kind of look. I, I that a lot of my photos have that have that feel. I, I just love the way that I don't know, that was that that speaks to me. I love that style. That's great. What would you tell somebody, uh, and Ken could uh, chime in too if he's there, uh, what would you tell someone who just wants to get started in, in number one, collect, uh, collecting, and then someone who wants to get started in maybe doing their own work, their own artwork? Well, for collecting, you should always choose what you like. Don't choose what you think will uh, increase in value. Choose the things you love. If it speaks to you, if it strikes you, that's what you should collect. Now, as for being a photographer, um, I'm not formally trained. Um, the best way to do it is take lots of photos, try different types of photo, you know, styles and see what, what works for you. Generally, if you take a lot of photos, you'll, what I found is I tended, tended to go towards a certain style, towards a certain, certain subjects, so you'll find that if you do enough of it, it's not like a once a week thing. It should really be like um, daily. Take something every, a little every day. And my suggestion, if you're not going to go through a formal education process, which is useful because you get some history of photography as well, and you'll be exposed to a lot of work from photographers over time. If you're coming from a do-it-yourself sort of perspective, the alternatives there are take images, a lot of them certainly, but maybe get involved in some groups where you, you value the opinion of others that are in the group and find out if your work is accomplishing what you think it should be accomplishing or what your goal is, or maybe even get some pointers as to how to accomplish something if you're not quite getting it. That's another way to, um, to educate yourself. Um, also, YouTube videos are really helpful. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've learned a lot from YouTube. From a technical standpoint? Uh, yes. And a subject matter standpoint. Right, subject matter, because some, but um, technical, because people have like, uh, just like how to, you know, do it yourself lighting, do it yourself, you know, different ways to um, approach a subject. Um, I also like for street photography, I had no clue. So I saw like different methods people use, like they would hold their camera, like maybe like a little below their chest and then start clicking. So they wouldn't they'd look so obvious. You don't want to have it up to your face, that kind of thing. There are a lot of techniques, both yeah. um, in terms of lighting, shooting, and um, that's something you can get from um, looking at YouTube videos, certainly, or post-processing. Just like in the old days, darkroom, you had to learn how to dodge and burn. These were physically technical skills. Well, now there's more different kinds of technical skills, and YouTube is really, really good for that. Yeah. Great. And uh, uh, I know uh, Ken has a, a Facebook page. Could you tell us your Facebook page there? Well, do you have a yeah. website as well? Uh, the Darkroom Gallery has a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash darkroomgallery. And there you'll see um, information about this show. There's an event that's set up. You can subscribe to that and be posted. And then um, we'll uh, put little updates on there as well. And uh, Peggy, do you have a website? Or, or, or... I do. It's, um, it's peggyreynoldsstudio.com. It's not open to the public right now because because of so much art theft, but it will be open soon. I just have to make it a little more secure. I understand that. I understand that. And Ken, tell people who might not be as familiar as I am with the, with the location, uh, it's on Main Street, give us, give us some directions. Well, everybody the knows gallery. about the, where the five corners are, right? Mm -hmm. So the five corners are in Essex Junction and the darkroom gallery is out the five corners, right next to Martone's Deli, which is a very famous spot around the corner from the um, Amtrak and the bus station. That's on Railroad Avenue. You just come around the corner. We're on Main Street, 12 Main Street, right between the, um, the bank and Martones. That's great. Fantastic. And once this is over, uh, do you have any plans for any uh, particular Very good question. Project? What will be happening in the gallery after Peggy's show? It's hard to say. Um, I'm not sure we're going to go back to the juried exhibit, model. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. And we were providing a good service. We were giving exposure to artists and, and we discovered Peggy. So there's a lot to be said for that model. And, um, but um, I'm not sure. One thing I'd like to do if I can um, get my day job to ease up a little bit, I'd like to start doing more of my own work. I do a fair amount of photography also, but haven't really been able to focus on it the way I might like to. 
So maybe I'll be showing some of my own. That's great. That's very interesting stuff. Well, I want to thank you for appearing on Positively Vermont. Uh, my guests have been Ken Signorello of the Dark Room Gallery located on Main Street in beautiful downtown Essex Junction, and photographer Peggy Reynolds, uh, who will be exhibiting her work on starting on May 13th uh, and a reception on May 22nd. And hopefully you'll see the posters either in the window or online and uh, stop by and see it. This is really a very interesting uh, group of uh, work that you have here. Thank you. Well, that's great. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ken and Peggy. Uh, this has been Dennis McMahon, and this has been Positively Vermont. Thank you for watching.